Shalom, uh, praise the Lord. Good morning, all of you kingdom builders. Welcome to class this morning. Uh, we'll begin with a word of prayer. So can I ask uh, any one of you to lead us in prayer, please? Deepu, can you lead us in prayer, please? Are you there, Deepu? Nobody wants to pray. Lord Heavenly Father, Lord, thank you. Thank you for this day, Lord, giving to us, my Lord. Lord, so as we go in the publication of Kingdom Builders, my Lord, Lord, give your wisdom and knowledge to understand what the man teaching to us, my Lord. Lord, Thank you for everything you have happened in our lives. In Jesus' name we pray and ask. Amen. Amen. Thank you, uh, Asapu. Thank you very much. Um, so last week we began um, uh, studying chapter 3. Uh, we're looking about uh, how the Holy Spirit um, is the one who is, you know, uh, uh, directs us and leads us. Um, and in kingdom building, it is essential that we submit to the direction and the leading of the Holy uh, Spirit. Uh, so we looked at um, how, you know, those things that are birthed out of the flesh cannot be converted into something of the Spirit. And we looked at an example in Exodus chapter 30, verses 22 to 33. I'm on page number 27. Uh, and we... Uh, we'll move on. Now we are on page number 29. Um, things that are born of the flesh hinders what God desires uh, to be birthed in the uh, spirit. Now we need to know that even as we go about kingdom building, that uh, God, you know, uh, reveals his plan and purposes in our spirit man, in our, uh, in our spirit. When we are born again, our spirit is uh, you know, uh, has the life and the nature of God is born again. And that's why scripture uh, admonishes us, tells us that we need to renew our minds and we need to renew our uh, bodies, okay, that we need to crucify our flesh and we need to also renew our uh, minds. We need to crucify our flesh because our, uh, our souls and our body uh, is inclined to the old man and hence we need to, you know, take those steps that are necessary to uh, do things to be transformed by the renewing of our mind and also crucify our um, flesh. Look at what um, Galatians chapter 5 verse 17 says, Galatians 5 17, can somebody read that please? For the flesh, lust again is the spirit, and the spirit again is the flesh, and these are contrary to one another, so that you do not do the things that you wish. Yes, amen. Thank you. Uh, so what is of the flesh will always oppose what is of the spirit. So why do we have to crucify the flesh? Because, you know, uh, the flesh is always um, crying out to satisfy our carnal fleshly desires, uh, worldly desires, things that are evil. Um, and so uh, we also know that as the scripture passage says that the flesh opposes what is of the uh, spirit. This is not only true in Christian ministry or in spiritual things, but also related to all areas of um, life. So the things that are birthed out of the flesh, uh, you know, the things that come out of our own wills, our own agendas, our plans uh, can be sometimes worldly, can be evil, can be things that are not aligned to God's will and plan and purpose for our lives. And those things are what hinders, you know, the things that God want, uh, wants to birth in and through our lives, what he, uh, you know, puts into our spirit man. So the things that are birth of the flesh uh, will be a hindrance to the things that are birth of the uh, spirit. Look at what John chapter 6 verse 63 says. Can somebody read that please? It is the spirit who gives life. The flesh profits nothing. 
the words that i speak to you are spirit and they are life amen so what is born of the flesh uh, this verse says that the flesh profits nothing it will not benefit people it will not be a, you will you know uh, do some things but it will not benefit people not transform the lives of people will not produce uh, 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 the life of god it does not have you know the power to produce life it does not have the power to produce uh, food so what is birth of the flesh may appeal to our senses it may please our senses uh, it can also you know kind of uh, elevate our emotions make us feel good but the genuine life and power and transformation uh, that will uh, that can bring about in the lives of the people comes only by the presence and the power of the Holy uh, Spirit. So sometimes we can do things that you know uh, are out of our own agendas, our own plan, our own will, and we can give you know uh, uh, put God's name in that. But that does that, that does not mean that it will yield. Um, uh, to what God uh, is uh, wanting to do, or it will not, uh, it will produce uh, fruit, it will, you know, it will transform lives, uh, because that is birth out of the flesh. But what is birth of the spirit is the one that, you know, has the life power and uh, which brings transformation uh, in the lives of people because it carries the presence and the power of the Holy um, Spirit. OK, so we need to always be careful as kingdom builders uh, and ask ourselves this question. Is this what I'm doing? Uh, is is it according to my what I like, what? you know uh, what i'm passionate about what i am excited about uh my will my agenda or am i doing what god has you know uh, uh, set me aside for is it god's plan will agenda for my um, life okay so as kingdom builders uh, we need to be single-minded uh, in our desires that means we need to be single-minded in our desires means that we need to do the father's will um and we need to give birth to the things of the spirit alone. If you look at uh, Jesus's life, he's a good example for us. You know, even when Jesus came here, the, uh, the people had a different agenda and a plan. They had a different concept of the Messiah. They wanted him to be the king who delivered them from the Roman rule, you know, uh, rule over them, bring them peace, uh, uh, establish, uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, freedom for them, uh, establish their own kingdom. But we see that, you know, um, and even it was God's will that, um, uh, that Jesus take on the sins of the whole world. And we know that he went through a struggle in that area, and but he um, aligned his will to God's will. In, we read this in uh, Matthew in the Garden of Gethsemane when Jesus said, you know, let your will uh, be done, right? Uh, not my will, but let your will be um, done. So we see that you know, even Jesus, um, uh, uh, you know, submitted to doing the Father's will. And it, uh, what did it birth? It birth uh, the plans and the purposes and fulfilled uh, the plan of redemption and salvation that God had planned even before the foundation of the world. Okay. Now, when we walk in the spirit, uh, we will not birth the things of the flesh. So how do we crucify the flesh? How do we overcome the desires of the flesh how do we not birth the things in the flesh is when we walk in the uh, spirit uh, galatians chapter 5 verse 16 says walk in the spirit and you shall not fulfill the lust of the uh, flesh now what does it mean to walk in the spirit uh, and how when we walk in the spirit will we not fulfill the desires of the or the cravings of our flesh or our carnal nature now to walk in the spirit is to uh, basically live a life that is yielded submitted uh, in submission to the to god to the holy spirit and being sensitive to the leading of the holy spirit being sensitive to what the holy spirit is leading us and guiding us to uh, do when we do that you know we will not birth the things of the uh, flesh and this is not something that happens once in a lifetime or once in a season but walking in the spirit is something that is a moment by moment choice that we make okay every day uh, we are um, 
Our spirit is calling out something. Our spirit is asking us to do something. And the flesh is crying out to do something else. So, you know, if you're in a situation where you have to lie to get yourself out, uh, you know, the, the spirit tells you, no, lying is sin. You know, lying displeases God. Uh, but uh, your flesh is saying, hey, you know, uh, it's just a small lie. If you don't lie, you will not get yourself out of the situation. Uh, you know, so the best thing to do is to tell a lie. You know, it's not going to harm anyone. It's not going to kill anyone. It's not murder. It's not some big grievous sin. Uh, so it's okay to tell a lie. And even if you tell a lie, you can go and ask God for uh, forgiveness. So you can see how, you know, your flesh is crying out to do something and your spirit is telling you to do something else. So for example, you're angry with somebody, somebody has done something wrong to you at the workplace or, you know, uh, uh, when you go shopping, you know, you're uh, upset or angry and uh, your flesh says, give it to him good, you know, or give it to her good. But your spirit is saying, you know, overlook the offense uh, or, you know, uh, forgive or let it go, you know, uh, be gentle, be gracious, be kind, be loving. But the flesh is saying, you know, give it back, you know, uh, how dare they speak to you like that? Or how can they do that to you? Or how can they say things like that to you? So every day, uh, you know, uh, it requires us to walk, uh, you know, uh, uh, walk in the spirit. And it's a moment by moment choice that we uh, make uh, and you know there are times when you know uh, uh, when we are uh, just influenced by the Holy Spirit in the choices that we make on a day-to-day -day basis when we're yielding to the Holy Spirit then when we have to make uh, bigger decisions you know uh, spontaneously we just uh, uh, you know listen to what the uh, uh, Holy Spirit is telling us in our spirit man and we just heed we just obey we just uh, follow okay so uh, there are times when the voice of our flesh cries out, you know, demanding attention, demanding things to, uh, demanding us to do things, say things, act in a way that is not God honoring, God pleasing, and uh, at those moments we draw strength from the uh, spirit, which means we just shut the voice of the flesh. And we listen to what the Spirit of God is saying. So we're saying, God, you know, uh, I'm in this situation. Uh, I want to react like this. Uh, but what do I do? I know your word tells me. Okay, so that is why it's important for us uh, to read God's word. And when God's word fills us, you know, automatically we are yielding to the spirit. We know what we need to do in that situation. We know what is right. We know what is wrong. And we choose to do what is um, right. Okay, so uh, walking in the spirit also means walking yielded uh, and in uh, brokenness okay so some of us are uh, you know very skilled highly skilled we are very competent uh, and you know uh, and at those times we need to be very careful because we are confident we are highly skilled intelligent people uh, we have done things in life we've achieved things in life and we are most likely to you know uh, listen to the flesh rather than depend on the holy uh, spirit so it's important that you know whatever we we have achieved whatever we have uh, done in life uh, you know no matter how intelligent we are competent we are skilled we are you know it's important that we continue to depend on the uh, holy uh, spirit so it's important to always stay yielded uh, to the bro uh, to the holy spirit yielding is a choice that we make we um, uh, to yield is basically, you know, to submit and to surrender. Uh, we choose to willingly listen and submit to the Holy uh, Spirit, just like Jesus did. You know, Jesus says, uh, constantly we read in the gospel, Jesus saying, I only do what my father asked me to do. I, and I only say what my father asked me to uh, say. So, uh, uh, when the son of God, the son of man, you know, himself yielded, uh, and submitted, you know, how much more we also need to make that choice to yield and submit and listen to the Holy uh, Spirit. Now, walking in the Spirit also is uh, uh, walking in a state of brokenness. Now, brokenness like yielding is also a choice. Brokenness is simply completely depending on the Lord, okay? Uh, we choose 
to uh, recognize, you know, when we are in a state of brokenness, we choose to recognize that we are just earthen vessels and that is only the power, the anointing, the presence, the mercy, the favor and the goodness of God upon us that will help us to bring fruit uh, in whatever we do, whether in kingdom building or whether we are engaged in the uh, in the uh, in the marketplace uh, where we God has called us to you know bring about His kingdom there, uh, establish His kingdom reign, rule, and presence. You know we need to know that it's only God's anointing in us, and it's not us that can bear uh, fruit. So we need to choose to stay dependent uh, on the Holy Spirit, not dependent on our gifting. Uh, Yes, God has given us the skills, the ability, the uh, the talents, uh, the wisdom, uh, but it's all given by Him. So we depend on Him and lean solely on His power to be manifested, even in our talents, in our gifting, in our in the skills that He has given us, and the wisdom that we uh, uh, we exhibit or use uh, at various uh, times. Okay, uh, and when we do that, you know, we can be truly kingdom. Uh, builders. Now, uh, how do we uh, uh, test, you know, uh, whether we are yielding to the things of the flesh or we are yielding to the things of the uh, spirit? So, uh, how do you how do you differentiate? How do you know that hey, my choice is based on uh, uh, you know what the Holy Spirit is telling me, or you know whether it's a birth out of the flesh. So you need to ask yourself this question when you're doing anything, or you are, you know, making a choice. You are, uh, you know, getting into action mode. You need to ask yourself what motivates me. You know what is motivating me. Um, uh, if you're motivated to do things out of anger, hate, hatred, jealousy, selfish ambition, uh, you know, envy or dissension, then we know that it is, uh, you know, all of these are the fruit of the uh, flesh that we read in Galatians chapter 5, verse 20 and 21. We know that in Galatians chapter 5, Paul lists out for us uh, the fruit of the flesh and he also lists out for us the fruit of the uh, spirit. Okay, so if we are doing things out of selfish ambition, you know, pulling down others, uh, you know, uh, so that we can get on the top, so that we can get the promotion, so that we can get the pay hike, so that we can get that place of uh, responsibility uh, or honor or being recognized, uh, then it is doing it out of selfish ambition, uh, envy, you know, uh, sometimes we can do it out of hatred, jealousy, anger, uh, whatever. Okay. So uh, then, you know, we know that it is actually we are yielding to the carnal nature, to our uh, flesh. Okay. And uh, if you are doing things out of the Holy Spirit or the what the Spirit is leading us to do, then we are motivated by, uh, you know, things that, um, uh, 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 edify others, you know, that bring joy, peace, uh, that is right, righteous in God's sight, that is right, um, and also that is going to promote God's uh, kingdom, okay? And another simple test uh, that we can uh, know whether it is the work of the flesh or the work of the spirit is to ask this question, who is being glorified, right? Um, so when you're doing something, who is being glorified? When you're leading worship, when you are, uh, you know, uh, preaching, when you're teaching or uh, when you're acting or you're doing anything kingdom related or even office related, uh, anything, you're asking yourself, hey, who is being glorified, right? Uh, 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 at the workplace, when you're giving an idea, when you are, uh, you know, uh, uh, trying to find a code for the uh, software uh, code or, you know, you're teaching or you're doing something, you know, or you're engaged in a, a, a project and God gives you the wisdom and, uh, you know, and you're doing it with the skill and the wisdom that he's given you and you're excited about it, uh, you need to ask yourself, you know, who is being glorified, you know. Whether it's you, you're thinking, hey, this is my wisdom, my knowledge, I came up with this idea, and you tell everybody, or, you know, Christ alone is exalted, magnified, and uh, 
glorified okay uh, like we see in daniel's life you know he was a man of excellence he did everything with excellence he exhibited the wisdom of god uh, you know and when the king asked uh, told him uh, you know to um, uh, uh, interpret the dream and he interpreted the dream and the king was praising daniel he said it's not me it's 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 my god who gave the interpretation for the dream even joseph when he was brought before pharaoh uh, pharaoh tells him you know i heard that you interpret dreams he said it's not me it's my uh, god so that is uh, you know uh, uh, you know glorifying god in that uh, situation joseph could have easily said you know yes i i can interpret dreams i have the gift and you know uh, thinking that hey at least that will get him out of prison forever and you know give him some place in uh, pharaoh's uh, uh, you know uh, palace as some officer but we see even in that situation he just glorifies god and when his uh, family comes to him re remember what joseph uh, says you know they ask him for forgiveness they all bow down before him his brothers he says you know uh, god brought me in this uh, position uh, you know, um, uh, so that, you know, uh, we can all be uh, safe. So it is God who has uh, done this. So we see how, you know, uh, uh, Joseph gives a glory to uh, God. Okay. So uh, how do we know whether we are birthing things out of the flesh or things out of the spirit? It's important to ask those two test questions. What motivates me and who is glorified? Okay. And we know that the work of the Holy Spirit, we've all, you've learned it in, um, in, in your first semester, in the first year. We also uh, learned about it when we were studying the publication, Fulfilling God's Purpose for Your Life, and also, uh, you know, receiving God's guidance. We know that the Holy Spirit reveals to us, you know, where, when, and how, you know, where uh, to establish His kingdom, when to do it, and how to. Uh, do it. We'll just look at uh, a couple of examples. I'm just going to run past these examples because we've already seen this, we've learned about this, but just stating it here. Now in Acts chapter 8, you know, uh, Philip was uh, told by the Holy Spirit to go near and overtake the uh, chariot, okay? So we see that um, uh, uh, when he obeys the Holy Spirit, he meets with the Ut Utopian eunuch and, you know, he uh, uh, explains to him what he was reading from uh, the book of Isaiah and uh, the Utopian eunuch. He accepts Christ and, you know, the Philip uh, baptizes uh, him. We also see another example in Acts chapter 10 where uh, Peter is hungry and, you know, um, uh, uh, you know, he's on the rooftop, uh, Acts chapter 10, verses 19 and 20, and the Spirit, Holy Spirit tells him, you know, uh, uh, go uh, go down, uh, uh, Peter, you know, three men are, are looking for you, go with them, uh, don't ask any questions, don't doubt them, uh, just go for I have uh, sent them. And we see that, you know, um, uh, uh, Peter uh, just follows the instructions and he goes, uh, but we see in, in these two instances, there is no detailed, long, descriptive instructions that the Holy Spirit is giving them. Both to Philip and Peter, uh, you know, they just uh, told, three, uh, Peter said, uh, is told, three men are waiting for you, just go with them, don't ask any uh, questions. And for uh, uh, Philip, you know, the Holy Spirit says, go near and overtake the chariot. Uh, uh, the Holy Spirit does not tell Philip who's there in the chariot, what is happening, what he has to do, uh, you know, where this person is coming from, no specific details, no detailed descriptive instructions. But uh, we see that, you know, um, even as these two people just obeyed, uh, 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 you know, their obedience was uh, very monumental uh, 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 in terms of the growth and the expansion of the kingdom of uh, God, okay? Uh, and the Holy Spirit's instruction was very short and simple, but even as they obeyed it, you know, uh, great things happen uh, when they uh, obeyed this instruction. Uh, God used Peter to take the uh, the gospel to the Gentiles, and God used Philip 
to you know explain to the utopian eunuch and he uh, took the gospel to uh, Utop uh, utopia okay so we see that these were monumental uh, uh, you know uh, moments in terms of growth and expansion of the kingdom of uh, god so great things happen when we just follow the simple instructions of the uh, spirit when we just obey him so the holy spirit can just tell you sometimes you know do this no detailed instructions you just take the first step and he will lead you and guide you in what to uh, uh, do okay um, we also see uh, you know we we studied in uh, christian history and missions when uh, paul was uh, in a second missionary journey you know he had his whole uh, itinerary planned out for his second missionary journey, the places that he had to go, uh, the places he had wanted to revisit. And so even as he was going through the regions of Bulgaria and Galatia, you know, uh, and um, uh, they had come to Mysia and they wanted to go to Bithynia, but we see that the Holy Spirit, you know, did not permit them, did not allow them. And uh, uh, Acts chapter 16, verse um, 9, we uh, read that, you know, uh, Paul had a vision at night where a man from Macedonia, you know, was pleading for him to come over to Macedonia and help them. And so because of that vision, you know, uh, Paul uh, communicated what he saw in the vision to his uh, team and they were all uh, in one accord and they all decided and they all went to uh, Macedonia. Uh, so we see that the Holy Spirit exactly knows where we need to go, what we need to do, when we need to do it, and how we need to do, uh, you know, uh, the work of kingdom building. So even as, uh, you know, you're in the second year, soon you'll be in the third year, you know, uh, some of you are preparing to step out into ministry, uh, you know, maybe you think, okay, uh, I've been doing this the last uh, one year or something, you know, or uh, my pastor wants me back in my church, which is good. Or, you know, we have our own church, which is also good. But maybe God is placing in your heart to do something else, right? Um, he wants you to go somewhere else, do something else. He has a specific calling and a purpose. But you have already have your plan and your agenda. It's important to just give it to the Lord and say, God, this is what I am thinking to do you know, uh, uh, but I'm willing to do your will. I'm willing to accommodate your plan because I know your plans and purposes are best for my life. So show me where I need to go, when, uh, you know, you want me to do things and how must I go about doing the work of kingdom uh, building, okay? Look at what Paul uh, says in Second Corinthians chapter 1, verse, um, uh, okay, we can read from verses 15 to 17. So can somebody read Second Corinthians 1, 15 to 17, please? Can I read it? Yeah. Yeah. Lucy reading. Let Lucy, Lucy read, sister. Okay, then I'll give you one more passage of scripture get, uh, to get to. Thank you. Yes, go ahead, Lucy. Thank you, Getu. And in this confidence, I intended, to, I intended to come to you before that you might have a second benefit, to pass by way of you to Macedonia, to come again from Macedonia to you, and be helped by you on my way to Judah. Therefore, when I was planning this, did I do it lightly? All the things I plan, do I plan according to the flesh, that with me there should be yes, yes, and no, no. This is the word. Amen. Thank you, Lucy. So here, uh, you know, Paul is making known his plans and he's saying, hey, this is not uh, something that I plan according to my flesh, but this is something that the spirit is leading me and directing me to. Uh, do so we see that in every step you know uh, uh, of kingdom building that uh, paul was engaged in we see that he does things according to the flesh and not according to the uh, spirit okay so uh, even the things that we plan and uh, want to execute, even as we are, you know, whether in full-time ministry or in the marketplace, in the business world, you know, it must be inspired by the work of the Holy uh, Spirit, okay? The work of the kingdom cannot be done with just human understanding. Uh, I'm not talking about just in, uh, when I'm talking about kingdom building, I know some of us are in full-time ministry, some of us in part-time ministry, uh, some of us are full-time in engage in the marketplace so you know whatever sphere of influence god has placed us he wants
wants us to bring his kingdom there. So when I'm talking about kingdom building, I'm talking about in, in all of these spheres that I have uh, just mentioned. Okay. So the work of the kingdom cannot be done with just human understanding. It requires us to be guided by the Holy Spirit. It requires kingdom thinking as well. It also requires our mind to be renewed. Uh, what is a renewed mind? Anyone knows? What is a renewed mind? We studied this in uh, uh, when we're studying receiving God's guidance for our lives. What is a renewed mind? Can we have some answers? Just try, it's okay. Thinking in the way of the word of God. Okay. Thinking uh, along, uh, uh, you know, uh, along the way of uh, what God has revealed in His uh, Scripture, in His Word. Okay. Anything else? A renewed mind. Yeah. St uh, go ahead, Asapu. It's not a natural and carnal mind, ma'am. That something we depend on faith and we believe. Okay. Thank you. Good try. So a renewed mind is a mind that takes on the ways and the thoughts of God. Okay. There's something that you need to remember, write down for yourself. Uh, remember important things. A renewed mind is a mind that takes on the ways and the thoughts of God. In Isaiah, God says, my ways are not your ways, neither are my thoughts your thoughts. As high as the heavens are above the earth, so high are my ways from your ways and my thoughts from your uh, thoughts. So our ways and thoughts are very different from God's ways and thoughts, but a renewed mind, a, a new mind, uh, you know, is a mind that takes on the ways and thoughts of God. And how do we take on the ways and thoughts of God? How do we know God's ways and thoughts? Having renewed mind. Man. Yes. Uh, how about how do we know the ways and thoughts of God? By reading scripture. his word. Yes, by reading scripture. Yes, by reading his word. Thank you, Asapu and Bimal. Thank you, Rupas. Yes, uh, renewed mind is a spiritual mind. It's also living and thinking, uh, you know, uh, the ways and the thoughts of God. Yeah, thank you. So, uh, minds that think in terms of God's ways and in line with God's thoughts okay that is a renewed mind and so uh, if you have to have a renewed mind you have to be somebody who's constantly uh, meditating feeding on god's word and let his word fill your heart and your mind that is why we read in ezekiel uh, chapter 32 where god says you know i will write my laws upon your heart and my mind because people were just obeying the uh, the commandments just for the sake of doing it without any reverence for God, passion and love for God. Um, and there was no, um, there was no, um, uh, you know, uh, the way God wanted it to be, uh, uh, the way God instituted his laws and commands uh, for them to, you know, uh, bring them closer to God, to know God better, to love him by doing those commands, you know, it kind of deviated from its original plan and purpose. And that is why God said, I will write my laws upon your heart and mind. I will remove your heart of stone, give you a heart of flesh, write my laws upon your heart and mind. And I will cause the Holy Spirit to, you know, help you to um, keep my laws and commands. So we read this even in, uh, you know, Paul writes about this in the book of Romans, you know, um, uh, uh, Romans chapter six and seven, he says, we are dead to sin, you know, uh, sin is no longer operative in our lives. And he talks about uh, uh, the law of sin and the law of uh, law of sin and death and the law of the spirit. Law means not the Old te uh, uh, Testament law, uh, or, uh, but it is uh, the law means the power, the dominion of sin and death, the power and dominion of the Holy Spirit, which he talks about in uh, chapter 6 and chapter 7. And then he says that even as we are dead to sin, even as we are dead to the power of sin um, and uh, the, the law of sin and death, but he says in chapter 7, hey, you know, there is this weakness in my flesh, my carnal nature. You know, I want to do things that, uh, you know, uh, according to the Spirit, 
but I do things that I don't want to do. Uh, and what I want to do, I do not do. And, you know, he cries out and he says it's because of the weakness of the uh, flesh. And then in verse in chapter eight, he beautifully brings out uh, the person and the work of the Holy Spirit. And he says, you know, when we walk according to the spirit, we will not uh, yield to the uh, 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 to the uh, to the the work of the flesh or to the law of the flesh, the power and dominion of the flesh, and he says it's to the power of the Holy Spirit that we can overcome the deeds of the uh, flesh. So that is a very glorious, beautiful, and powerful uh, chapter, uh, uh, chapter eight of Romans, where he's talking about the work of the Holy Spirit and how the Holy Spirit enables us to put to death. Uh, the the deeds of the flesh the uh, the crucify the carnal nature and how he reiterates that hey we are indeed uh, dead to the flesh because we are alive in the uh, spirit because when we are born again the holy spirit comes and lives in us and we have the life and nature of god in us and it's the life of the holy spirit in us that will help us to overcome the law of uh, sin and the law of the flesh uh, and the law of death. Law means, you know, power, dominion of uh, sin, of death and of the flesh, okay? So the more we are uh, reading God's word, the more we are communicating with the Holy Spirit, we will be able to put to death the deeds of the uh, flesh. And that is why sometimes we can see people who say that they are born again you know they are baptized because they're born again but we see them you know uh, living in their uh, there's no difference between their old nature and their new nature why because they are yielding to the things of the uh, flesh so it's a choice that we make god does not do that for us the holy spirit lives in us he helps us he guides us he counsels us but he does not treat us like puppets and says hey don't do this this is of the flesh do this this is of the spirit no he does not do that um, he teaches us he guides us but the choice is ours so the more you are so there is a tug of war that is happening within us every time we make a choice. You know, the flesh is pulling us on one side, the Holy Spirit is pulling, you know, is telling us to do something. So there is a war that is happening uh, within us and it's a choice that we make. And, you know, like Paul says in Galatians chapter 5, the, you know, the flesh cries out. So the flesh is crying out, the Spirit is telling you, uh, the Holy Spirit in your spirit man is telling you to do something. Now, if you keep on yielding to the flesh, the flesh is growing because you're feeding the flesh. And what happens to the voice of the Holy Spirit? Your spirit man is dying, okay? And you're listening to the flesh. And the more you yield to the flesh, uh, you know, constantly you are going to be listening to your flesh because the flesh voice of the flesh is louder than the voice of the spirit. But the more you're listening to the what the Holy Spirit is telling you in your spirit man and yielding to the spirit, your spirit man is growing. And you are starving your carnal nature, your fleshly nature, and that is being suppressed. And so you will see yourself constantly following the things of the Holy Spirit. Okay, I hope that ex uh, that is a good explanation and you're able to understand. So even in the mundane, small things, choices that we make every day, you know, that's why I said walking the Spirit is a moment by moment thing. We need to keep on listening to the Spirit. The more you're yielding to the spirit, the more you are starving your carnal nature and that is become that will at one point grow dead and you will be finding yourself not having any uh, uh, so-called, you know, big struggle. There will be a struggle, yes, there, but there will not be that's a big struggle for you to yield to your spirit nature and do what the Holy Spirit is telling you. Okay, now how does the Holy Spirit speak to us? We've already studied this in uh, fulfilling God's purpose and receiving God's guidance to the quickening of the written word, uh, inner witness, the Holy Spirit, a small voice, the inner witness, your impression in your spirit man. Uh, uh, you know, the Holy Spirit can just give you uh, information in your spirit man like a flash to just come inside you. You just know inside your spirit man what you need to do because you are feeding on God's word, uh, knowing on the inside, the peace of God, which is like an empire, umpire that, you know, kind of tells you, hey, you know, what you're doing is right, 
or when you feel restless, you don't have the peace, you know that what you're doing is wrong, it's not God pleasing in God's sight. Uh, sight. So there's feeling in your spirit, man. Then also, you know, God can communicate to us through ideas, through pictures, through prophecy, dreams, visions, physical manifestation, and many other ways. So we studied all of these things. Uh, so we'll just move on. You know, um, how is it essential for us uh, or is it essential for us to establish an unbreakable communion with the Holy uh, Spirit? Okay, so uh, part of walking uh, or doing in part of walking in the Spirit, or part of doing or yielding or submitting to the Holy Spirit, is walking in communion with the Holy uh, Spirit, which means maintaining an undisturbed communication uh, with the Holy. Uh, spirit okay this way we will know you know when he has spoken what he has asked us to do and we will not miss his direction so sometimes when we are making big decisions we are running to god and we are not able to discern whether it's the voice of our our own voice of our conscience if it's the uh, the devil because the evil one can also you know lead us um, imitate you know, he can, he's a perfect imitator of, uh, you know, and say things uh, and we can believe and think that it's God telling us. So, and it's also, there's a voice of the Holy Spirit. So these three voices that are there and you are trying to struggle to find out, hey, which is the voice of the Holy Spirit. So that is why it's important for you to communicate with the Holy Spirit on a day-to-day -day basis, moment by moment. Anytime you're making a choice, Holy Spirit, what do I do? What do I say? How do I react? You know, when we do that in the simple mundane things of life, then when we are making big decisions, we will not have this confusion, but we will know with clarity whether it's our conscience, whether it is uh, speaking or whether it's the uh, evil one who's speaking or it's the voice of the Holy uh, Spirit. And when we know it's the voice of the Holy Spirit, we will just do what he has asked us to do so how do we walk in communion with the holy spirit how do we walk in communion with the holy spirit any answers come on how do we walk Med in communion with the holy spirit meditating on god's word on daily basis yes meditating on god's word what else uh, fellowship with the holy spirit Yes, fellowship with the Holy Spirit. How do you fellowship with the Holy Spirit? Uh, by praying and ask, uh, praying, speaking and to Him, the Holy Spirit, yeah, to guide you in whatever okay. you're doing and to inspire you in with the walk of the, uh, I mean, daily life. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Anything else? Speaking Having in good intimate relationship. Okay, speaking in tongues. Thank you, Lucy. Uh, yes, the more you speak in tongues, it edifies your spirit man. You're able to listen to God, understand his ways, his plans and purposes are, you know, communicated to you. His will is communicated to you. Yes. Yes, Asapu? Having good intimate relationship, man. Yes. How do we have that good intimate relationship? Having, uh, spending more time with God's presence. Meditating yes. on scriptures, mm -hmm. listening from him. Yes. Thank you. Obedience Anything else? and submission. Yes, obedience and submission, very, very important. Anything else? Walking in peace, right? Uh, uh, walking in peace is when we are totally uh, trusting God, you know childlike faith that we have you know even in the midst of the storm and difficulties we can have that total peace uh, because we are walking in him who is the god of peace and we know that the god of peace uh, will crush satan under our feet like we read in romans chapter 16 verse 20. anything else align ourselves and yield to the holy spirit okay align our will to the holy spirit yield to the holy spirit yes Now, the Holy Spirit is holy and pure, and so it's important for us also to maintain purity of heart, life, and 
uh, uh, purity in our heart, purity in our life, and in our uh, motives. Okay, um, and when we are pure uh, in our heart, is when we can, uh, you know, receive. Uh, his revelation, receive his will and know his will and plan and uh, purpose. Like it says in Matthew chapter 5 verse 8, the pure in heart will see uh, God, will receive revelations from uh, him. So um, the Holy Spirit is holy and hence he delights, you know, and he wants us to delight in being holy. Uh, and when we are holy, he reveals his plan and will for us, like we read in Psalm 4, verse 3. Um, but know that the Lord has set apart for himself him who is godly. Okay, so that is another uh, important thing for us to maintain communication with the Holy Spirit, purity of heart, life and motives. And also, you know, walking in love. That is very, very important so if you walk in love you know we can maintain fellowship with the holy uh, spirit because we know that god is love he abides in love and those who abide in him abide in love and uh, you know uh, god in him like we read in first john chapter 4 verse 16 can somebody read that please uh, 1 john chapter 4 verse 16 It's there on page number 36 in your publication. God is love and he who abides in love abides in God and God is him. In him. Amen. Thank you, Asapu. So God is love and when we abide you know, he who abides in love or he who manifests loves or walks in love or does things in love abides in God. That means it's living in God, fellowshipping with God and God is with him. So um, we cannot walk in him or walk in the spirit if we are not walking in love. So all these things are very, very important. Uh, you know, if you want to hear what the Holy Spirit is telling us, communicating to us and how we can extend this kingdom, build this kingdom, or even in the mundane uh, plans and activities and, you know, purposes and the choices that he has uh, for our lives. But even as the Holy Spirit reveals his plan and purposes for us, it's important uh, that, you know, uh, we need to know or uh, we need to be very careful or it's important for us to discern when we need to act. Sometimes the action is immediate, okay? Um, you know, uh, when the Holy Spirit told Philip, go near and overtake the chariot. So he obeyed instantly without questioning. But there are other times when the Holy Spirit speaks, when we need to take time to pray, prepare and act on that instruction so for example the holy spirit is telling you uh you know you're praying and asking the holy spirit okay holy spirit you you're the one who leads me guides me tells me when, what when how um so i'm praying i want you to show me you know what i need to do after i finish my second year or my third year of theological studies what do i do so the Holy Spirit will reveal and say, hey, I want you to go such and such a place, you know, do evangelism or as a missionary or church planting or be in the marketplace. I want you to do this, initiate this project. And you're excited and you immediately leave a Bible college and you go and start, you know, whatever the Holy Spirit is telling you. No, but, you know, you need to also know that the Holy Spirit is revealing things ahead, the next season of life. And even as the Holy Spirit reveals things about for you, his plans and purposes, or the plans and purposes of God for you for the next season in life, it's important that, you know, why is he doing it? So that you take time to pray, prepare, and do what it takes so that you can be fruitful in uh, doing what he has planned and purpose for you in the next season. So even as he's given you the plan, he will also give you the, uh, you know, step-by-step -step leading on who you need to uh, connect with, how you need to prepare yourself, what are the things that you need to do, okay? We have just one minute before the break. Anyone has any questions? Any questions?
No questions? Okay. Uh, there are no questions. We'll go for our break and then we'll come back and then we will continue from page number 37. Okay.